you you the first person I've ever met that I've been able to ask this question or could even uh, speak on this. You get to work with the legendary Sean Connery. Nobody and I did. So the the first this is the first time I've ever said this to anyone or been able to ask this question. Can you please tell me your memories and your history of working with the, the legendary Sean Connery? <laughs> How long do you have? Uh, you know, uh, obviously, you know, R.I.P. Sean, a uh, very complex character, uh, one who I, I did have the honor of uh, drinking with often. Um, and, and I know that would come as a shock to many of those who thought Sean was a teetotaler, but uh, he wasn't. Um, working with him, uh, socializing with him, overall dealing with him, uh, for me was uh, really, really pleasurable. Um, for others, however, um, maybe not as pleasurable. Um, he didn't suffer fools. Uh, I, I did begin the, the relationship with him on the right foot when I sent him the script, or I had Warners sent him the script. They, they pleaded with me. They said, look, we're never going to make a deal with him. The movie's greenlit. You can all, you know, you, you don't need a big star to, to do this. And I said, no, I think he'd be really good for the part. Sent him the script, and uh, a couple of weeks later, I got a phone call at home with that great baritone voice of his, uh, Sean here. Um, and I'm like, oh, fucking James Bond on the phone. <laughs> uh, so my first impressions would be like anyone else. Holy shit, that voice. So unique and amazing. Uh, <clears throat> I, I, I then flew to uh, uh, Malaga, where he had a house, and... and um, Spent several days with him. Um, you know, he was he was pushing back on me in cer certain parts of, of uh, his character, and I pushed back on him uh, fiercely. You know, I did not want to let him uh, feel that uh, he was going to be in control, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and and this is uh, an actor who obviously super skilled could do pretty much what he wanted and and certainly could work with directors that he didn't like um and and uh, not take direction uh, but uh, we kind of established a really great working relationship and and you know finally i remember walking up the driveway with him and saying sean you know you've made up your mind whether you're going to do this movie with me or not. You know what I mean? Like, I'll let Warners worry about the deal. They'll make you a deal. Um, but you got to tell me now, because if, if, if it's no, and that's cool. You can turn it down. That's fine. Uh, because what I said, and he looked at me, he's like, Oh, I'm in. So, um, you know, Michael Caine did not get the part, and um, Sean did. But it, it's funny how you say uh, he doesn't. He didn't suffer fools gladly because I, I don't think that he suffered geniuses gladly either. Like he just, it just seemed to be that he's one of those guys that I'm doing okay today. Would you stay there and I'll be over here? You know, he's just like, just don't fuck it. Like, what was it? What What was it like? Uh, because when you made Avengers with him, that was in the, the later 90s or something, the mm. mid-90s? Late 90s, yeah. Well, he was, he'd already been considered at least a decade or two before that, uh, a living legend. So uh, at that stage, what was it like as a director to go, uh, Sean Connery, I think you might need to do another take? Oh, no, no, no. I, I, that, that's never really an issue um, with any actor. Most, most actors who are, who are pro are there because they really like to work. And uh, I, I, I don't think there's a significant difference with professionals uh, and actors who really love what they do uh, to dig deep and work with a director and explore and move on. I, I, I certainly, um, I mean, I suppose if an actor just takes a part, you know, for a little bit of coin, 
you know what I mean? And shows up, gives you one take and walks off. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I've never walk, worked with those actors or on projects like that. But no, I mean, Sean would go the distance. Uh, once he's on set, um, I didn't feel there was ever any difference between him and, you know, uh, Eddie Izzard, for example, whose film must have been his first or second film. So, um, no, it was a lot of fun. There was a moment, though, when Rafe and I and Sean were doing a scene together, the three of us, and we're fighting on the bridge uh, during this interior storm and flooded takes. I think we were, we were at Pine, we were Shepperton, I think, at that point. And, and um, we were all drenched, and it was, like, really full on. And Rafe and I looked at each other, and we went, can you fucking believe we're working with Sean Connery? <laughs> like there was just that one moment where, where it was great. And and I remember uh, Rafe's birthday where I, I actually, I remember Rafe's birthday where I got Sean into the camera to say happy birthday uh, from me, uh, Bond, James Bond. So I got him to actually do that, which, you know, under normal circumstances, he didn't hate it kind of revisiting that, but, but he did it. With with complete affection for Rafe, who he loved, and and uh, uh, me, who I guess he tolerated. But um, no, o overall was great. Uh, the difficulty with working with Sean was always kind of inside baseball. If you made a schedule that called him to work, say at two in the afternoon, um, this is a man who drove himself to work, knew his lines, in and out of makeup. I mean, no bullshit, ready to work. But if you then, if you were slipping on the schedule or something happened and you didn't get to him, say before four, uh, it's not that the director would hear from him, but the assistant director would be called into his trailer and you could just see it rocking and hear the bucket screaming. <laughs> He'd rather be on the golf course than waiting in his trailer. But when it came to work and doing the work, he was all in all the time and... Um, I, I don't think that was uh, different from maybe his 50 years or, or more of, of approaching work. You know? so that's, yeah, my, that's Sean. One of my favorite Sean Connery stories was uh, when he did the, the Michael Bay uh, film, The Rock, and mm -hmm. Michael Bay had heard about the, his reputation a bit, so he deliberately made a fake schedule to give to Sean Connery that, that seemed like he was going to be there longer, knowing that, that Michael Bay was going to be like, no, we'll get this done in like a quarter of the time. So that if my, so Sean Connery's like, that's it, we're done for the day. It's like, like yes, that's just done. And he'd be like, you're the greatest director I've ever met. Yeah, well, that didn't last. <laughs> 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 From what I understand. Yeah. Anyway.